<laughs> um, it seems like things are um, moving or, or even accelerating given um, the pace of, of arena talks in the past. How close do you think the city is to building a new event center at this point? Can I still call it an arena? Sure. Uh, well, uh, council will be briefed this afternoon on some proposed elements of what a deal might look like. And I think what's critical to remember here is that we have never wavered from our principles on this. And our number one principle is public money must be spent for public benefit. And so as long as what is presented to us today meets those criteria and principles, then I think we'll be able to have a very good conversation with the public over the next several days about whether this is something the public thinks makes sense. Do you think a week is adequate for the public to decide that? You know, the thing about this conversation is that it has gone on for so very long. And what really people will be thinking about this week are the specific elements of what a deal might look like, should a deal come forward, uh, not the general question of whether we need a new arena. That engagement's been done in great depth. So I think that we can have a focused period of time on which the public can really talk about the elements of the deal, if there is one, and whether that makes sense. Are you confident that having an arena in the same spot will grow that community? I know we saw in Edmonton, they moved it completely, and the big sell from the Flames is that this will help just grow that area, that Rivers District. Are you confident that is the case, considering you know it's, we have an arena in the same spot still? It's an excellent question, but I think it's the wrong question. Uh, because what we're really looking at is not sort of a bunch of magic beans that you put an arena there and wow, economic development is gonna happen. It's quite a different situation than in Edmonton where they displaced a lot of uh, development into that district. In our case, as the city grows, as the city prospers, we will have more of an entertainment district that we have chosen to put in East Victoria Park. Of course, there's already an arena there. So the question is, will a new event center uh, help accelerate that Will it change it in any way? I certainly do not believe that plopping an event center into a neighborhood suddenly means you're going to have tons of economic development all around it. I think, I think that is not what will happen, and I think it would not be honest to say that would happen. I think, though, an interesting question is, given that we're developing that cultural and entertainment district anyway, what would a new arena in that location add to that district? And I know that we've done some very conservative numbers around would it speed up the development a little bit? Maybe you'd get a slightly different kind of development. But certainly that has been a very conservative conversation. You know, if someone came back to me and said, ah, billions of dollars of economic development will result if you invest this, I'd be very skeptical. Look, I've read all the literature. I know what the economists say. And I think that we have to move forward in a very, very thoughtful way and not rely on those kinds of promises. What light can you shed in terms of you know, council gets briefed today, but it has to have a final ratification next week? Why such a short time frame on that? Well, not necessarily. Uh, you know, certainly that'll be part of the discussion that we have, and I feel like I'm going to be able to talk to you so much more after council has been briefed. Uh, I'm not usually evasive on things, as you all know, um, but I do think that if the deal is ready to go, let's not stretch this out forever. Um, you know, we've been talking about it for years and I don't want to be in a situation where we come back to it over and over and over again. You know, I've learned my lesson on that with this particular council. And the point is that, I'll just be blunt, I'll answer the question you haven't asked yet. The optics of this stink, right? It is, it's really terrible timing. But at the same time, if the deal is ready to go, I'm not about to hold it back to try and find a time when it's more favorable to keep it from the public. If the deal's ready to go, we should get it to the public as soon as possible. And so as a result, once it's with the public, I also don't think there's any need to drag out the discussion forever. Members of council know what they are negotiating parameters they agreed to were. They will know whether or not any proposed deal fits in those parameters. Uh, they want to hear from the public, but then they should be able to make a decision quite quickly. <laughs> Well, it's very important for us to maintain our principles on that. And the principle the most important is that if there is a lot of money in the public, it should have a lot of benefit in the public. And for me, it's the most important thing 
qu'il me faut penser. And how do you justify the timing of this when there are cuts right now, $60 million? Oh, look, like I say, the optics stick. They really stick. But I am not one of those people who tries to massage or manage the public discussion so that we can get the outcome we're looking for. If the deal is ready, the public deserves to know what's in that deal. Can the public expect that there will be more public money in the discussion involved this time than the years ago? That is a question for 6 p.m. And one more question, just yes. Calgary Strong. Uh, why weren't they allowed to speak today or tomorrow? Uh, you know, this is a toughie because we have certain rules of procedure around council. And one of those rules is if we want to invite people to speak to council, we make a point of inviting everyone. It was, I think, a mistake for us to listen to only a few members from the business community uh, the last time because they represented one point of view. And well, I have a lot of sympathy for the Keeps Calgary Strong folks, and I hope that they have woken up a dragon that will continue to be awake for fighting for public services and fighting for everyone in this community. I did not think it was fair to invite just them and not others to come to speak to council. Oh, the même chose? C'est important pour nous prendre le conseil de écouter tous les gens publics qu'il faut l'inviter, qu'il faut inviter tout le public. Si on ne fait pas ça, c'est difficile parce qu'on on attend seulement une partie de l'histoire. Et pour, pour cette raison, c'était difficile uh, d'accepter uh, toutes les consultations de Keep Calgary Strong. Can you just provide a comment on how the, the comments from Councillor Bondek could affect discussions on this tomorrow? Uh, you know, what we've got here is a situation where City Council is grappling with a very, very tough decision and frankly has not done a good job. It's a very, very complex issue. There are a number of different uh, personal objectives here, and it's a very tough job. You know, if the councillor wants to relitigate her idea that got a fair vote and failed 12 to three, it was kind of a terrible idea, increasing everyone's taxes and then providing all the money that we set aside for the businesses to give residents a rebate and have nothing left to help the businesses. You know, I suppose one could relitigate that, but it had a fair hearing at council. And the point is, look, the option that's before us is not the best option. There were better options. The council rejected them all. And this is the last one on the table. Council has already spent the money. So for them to now step back and say, we don't want this would be pretty surprising. All right, thanks guys.